And the first nutrient I want to talk about is alpha-lipoic acid. Um, I'm referencing an article here uh, that was published in the Review of Diabetic Studies uh, very, very recently. And uh, this particular article actually appeared online in February of 2010. And uh, the title of the article is Alpha-Lipoic Acid and Diabetic Neuropathy, another really fine article. And there have been many articles that have been written about the usage of alpha-lipoic acid in diabetic patients. And the fact of the matter is, is that it is one nutrient that is essential to health. And when you do have diabetic neuropathy, it can help speed the healing process. Because one of the things that it's very good at is helping your body process energy more efficiently. In fact, most of the nutrients that we recommend for the treatment of peripheral neuropathy or the clinical co-treatment of peripheral neuropathy have the net effect of boosting cell energy. Remember, this is also why we use various forms of neurostim and now added uh, low-level laser therapy and LED. The whole idea is to get the body, especially the nervous system, to utilize energy more efficiently. So alpha-lipoic acid is no exception. However, there's a couple of cautions. Number one is Personally, I don't think alpha-lipoic acid or any nutrient should be given by itself. For the simple reason is that they act synergistically and they have additive effects. One of the things I have found in my work with peripheral neuropathy patients in the clinic is that oftentimes we're able to give patients relatively low doses of a lot of these supplements because we use combinations and the combination nutrients really seem to produce very profound effects. The combinations are somewhat universal, but not always. And there are some contraindications that we'll talk about as we get into some of the other supplements. Not so much with alpha-lipoic acid, except the big uh, takeaway I have for you as a patient with alpha-lipoic acid is if you are diabetic or you do suffer from metabolic syndrome or think you may, you've got to be monitoring your blood sugar very carefully because what we have seen in our clinics especially is that when we start to administer alpha-lipoic acid to patients along with some of the other nutrient cofactors that we commonly recommend, not only do we see patients lose significant weights, in fact, I'm reminded of one patient here in our clinic about 18 months ago who, with no other change at all, lost 12 and a half pounds in six weeks simply by taking the supplement program that we put him on. I'm also reminded of another patient who not only lost a significant amount of weight, but also dropped her blood sugars by over 100 points and thus needed to reduce her medications. So again, this is the caveat or the buy beware, so to speak, is we don't want you to self-treat, we don't want you to self-medicate. As you start to utilize these supplements, you have to realize that they will affect certain blood parameters and they have to be monitored. One of the things that I really like as a clinician about alpha-lipoic acid is that there is very good evidence to be giving it to patients with diabetic peripheral neuropathy. Again, our caveat, if you will, is to make sure that it's always being used under some significant uh, supervision. And by significant supervision, if you are diabetic, we suggest that you monitor your blood sugar first thing in the morning fasting, two hours after lunch, two hours after your evening meal, and then right before bed. That's remarkable. Thank you, John. A local woman with diabetes asks the experts about fitting in fitness. She has some pretty serious complications from diabetes, and we have their answers in today's Medical Edge. Lindsay Brewer is a lead athletic trainer at the TriHealth Fitness and Health Pavilion in Montgomery. As the director of the rehab program here, she's pretty used to helping people get back on their feet, you might say. But a local 12 viewer says, what do you do when you really can't get back on your feet? Our question comes to us from Brandy, who has what's known as peripheral neuropathy. She says, I have diabetes. I'm in really good health otherwise. My average blood sugars or my hemoglobin A1C been great. But what I want to know now, could you ask your experts, is there any exercise that someone can do with this acute diabetic neuropathy? Yes, Brewer says, but first let's define this common complication in diabetes, neuropathy. It usually starts in the feet or the lower legs, and it's kind of a decrease in sensation, either um, burning, tingling, or just numbness or um, loss of motor control in the feet. And some of the complications can be ulcers or infections. 
So get aerobic with the help of a recumbent bike, Brewer suggests. They don't have to worry about their balance. Their feet are in the pedals, so it's a safer exercise. Ellipticals may also be an option because you can hang on to sidebars with your arms. Then build your core or center and legs for better balance. Machines like these work well. Whatever you do, Lindsay Brewer says don't give up on exercise. It can slow the disease down, it can decrease your symptoms, decrease the amount of meds you have to take. So it is probably the most important thing that you can do for yourself. In other words, you're worth it. Oh, so true. We would love to have you share your questions with our providers at TriHealth. Just go to local12.com and click on Ask the Expert. Thank you very much, Bob. In our health alert this morning, it doesn't matter what you do, just get off the couch. That is the latest from a study in diabetes care. Researchers found those with type 2 diabetes who did either weight training or aerobic exercise worked to bring down hemoglobin A1C levels or your average blood sugars. Experts at TriHealth Fitness and Health Pavilion in Montgomery say it is partly because it helps circulation. It's a progressive disease and it's permanent, but you can slow those symptoms down and the increased circulation can help with that. Now this report also found either exercise also helps bring down body fat, especially in the trunk area like your lower body. That's kind of that stubborn fat as we call it. it took about four months to whittle this type of fat away. In other health Well, how long has, has, have you had severe pain? For two years. For two years? Very bad. Do you have it every day? Every day. If I don't bombard myself with medication, I've lost my job, I lost my insurance, and I had to go through the government. So they gave me all this kind of medication. They start me on Vicodin. They start me on Tramadol, Naproxen. What are the things that you're having trouble doing? As much as kind of trying to get dressed myself, like sometimes he needs to tie my shoes. He needs to put my shoes on. Sometimes I cannot even put my underwears. He puts my underwears up to my knee and then I just push him up. And um, everything. How many hours a day do you have pain? All day, all day. I almost leave. And he tells me, he looks like he hears me humming because I'm turning side to side. 24-7. And every day? Every all day? day all day? Every day? All day. For yeah. two years? For two years. Yeah, go right ahead. Is it hard for you to get up? Yeah. Okay. I'm going. <laughs> Can you just up? walk a few steps so we can, doctor, the doctor can see how... A few steps? More? That's good enough. Okay. And this has been going on for... Two years. For no. two years. Okay, yeah. you can go back. Let's do the... It makes it harder on the rug. I ripped the rug off my house. So, if I bring your leg, tell me when it starts to bother your back or down your leg. Right there, right there. Right there. If you could go a little bit more high on that one. Okay. Right there. Really good go. And then on that one leg. doesn't go too high. That one goes, ah, right there, right there. Right there. Okay. How many hours a day have you been having pain? How day long? From all day long, 24-7. 24-7. For how long? Two years. Okay. All right, now it's... The dose was at nine minutes after four. And this is about... This is three minutes. What is happening? Oh 
Hulk. <laughs> Is this different? Oh, oh yeah. When was the last time you felt like this? I don't know, about two or three years ago. Okay. Oh my God. I could do this. Aliviada? I'm muy aliviada, muy. Pero muy aliviada. Oh my God. Wow, I can't believe this. Two years of pain. One little single shot. Oh my God. Wow. You're giving my life back? What do you think? <laughs> Thank you. How do your legs feel hanging off the table now? Before it was hurting. <laughs> oh, thank you. Straight leg. Yes. Oh my God, Julio. I have legs. Can you walk? Oh my God. How do you feel? Let's go down the hall. Let's go down the hall. Oh. How are you feeling now? Oh God, this is incredible. Ooh. Oh God. Come on back. This is it. Did it work? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, this we're going to let the, this slip pass, let me just do it passively, so. No pain in your back or down your no shooting pains on your leg on that side. No pain at oh, tell me if there's any pain on your back or down no. your leg. <sighs> God. Thank you so much. Today is May eleventh, two thousand and nine. You had your first shot of Perry Spinal Tenorcep one week ago and then what happened? Okay, that day I came in here, I, I didn't know how much pain I had. I, I, I didn't know, I know pain is different from everybody, but I didn't know that I had so much pain in me. I cannot describe him, try to describe it to him. I'm not saying what your husband says. Uh, I think I think it, it was different. I mean, this is another person. This is, yeah. I mean, that that was not her. I mean, now I think we got her back. I mean, the, the smile, the, the, I mean, going to bed and sleeping. I mean, she just spent eight, six, seven hours on pain at night to get up in the morning on pain. I mean, now she get up, going to bed and get up with no help. I mean, she, she's moving. She's, I have to put my yeah. shoes on. She's, I mean, she's a, my pants. She's alive. It's a, it's yeah. She's alive. I think that, that actually is getting back in into the game. Yes. And I need to start using those muscles that I wasn't using huh? for a while. She's yeah. moving. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I I have fun doing this because um, yes. I wasn't able to do this. So, I forgot which I think was both feet or this which one it was, but before you had the pain, I lifted your leg up, right? And then yeah. this side, I think it was what I think was worse. But you could have all the way up. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Today is August 14th, 2009. It's three months after we started. What kind of difference has this made for your life? Tremendous. I, now I'll be able to, I'm holding my grandson and playing with him. Huh. I can grab him in my lap and play with him and, and enjoy it. Okay. <laughs> I, can, I wasn't able to do that before. I'm doing a lot better. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you, You're Dr. Tavinitz. You're welcome. 
Hi, my name is Charles Van Kessler. I'm a nutritional researcher. And today I'd like to talk to you about the powerful B vitamins. All the B vitamins are water soluble. The known Bs are B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B12, and B15, as well as choline, biotin, folic acid, inositol, and PABA. Although these are the only vitamins in the B complex that have been identified, there's many more. Scientists and researchers estimate that there are well over 100 vitamins in this complex which all work together. This is why it's so important to take a B-complex vitamin from a whole food-based liquid product rather than a synthetic vitamin. B1 helps to convert the glucose into energy and also improves the muscle tone of the stomach, the intestines and the heart. B2, this vitamin helps the body absorb and utilize vitamin B6. It's necessary for cell respiration. It works with enzymes to assist in the utilization of oxygen. It also helps our mitochondria in order to produce energy. It helps also with stress from injury or surgery, and it helps to produce red blood cells. B3, this is important for mental clarity and tranquility. It has a major effect on our circulatory and nervous system. It's a very important uh, ingredient for brain metabolism. Studies show, studies show, excuse me, studies show that it might be instrumental in relieving symptoms of schizophrenia. It brings more oxygen to the brain. B5, this is an immune system stimulant. It helps produce healthy skin and nerves as well as combat fatigue, depression and insomnia. It can protect against the harmful effects of antibiotics. Vitamin B6 it supports all the basic body functions and it must be present for the reproduction of antibodies and red blood cells. Without sufficient red blood cells, the body cannot receive the oxygen required for optimum health. And without the production of antibodies, the body is left vulnerable to attack by many foreign invaders. One cause of a severe B6 deficiency, for example, is the ingestion of refined sugars. It's very important for the breakdown and utilization for carbs, carbohydrates, fats and proteins. B6 is also helpful in the treatment of mental illness, including schizophrenia, autism and depression. Then there is the B9, folic acid. Folic acid's greatest claim to fame may be that it is necessary for the formulation of nucleic acid, which is essential for the process of growth and reproduction of all body cells. Without folic acid, cells do not divide properly. Since folic acid deficiency is the most common vitamin deficiency in the world, it is no wonder that so much degenerative disease is prevalent in our society. A deficiency can lead to irritability, forgetfulness and mental sluggishness. It's also needed for the production of red blood cells. Many recent medical studies have shown that B12, B6 and folic acid together can reproduce or actually can reduce coronary artery disease. Vitamin B12, that's the preventer of mental illness. It helps to prevent and reverse coronary artery disease. Your DNA cannot replicate without it. A lack of B12 has been found to cause a type of brain damage resembling schizophrenia. Vitamin B12 will drastically increase your body's energy and vitality. With the stressful lives that most of us live on a day-to-day -day basis, eating a quick bite of food here or there, usually fast food loaded with fat, chemicals, hormones and other ingredients, and not very good for you, it's very important to make sure you get your B vitamins. One in four important combination of the B vitamins is the B12, the B6 and the folic acid. Studies show that this combination taken daily for at least two months can reduce your risk of heart attacks, stroke and Alzheimer's by up to 50%. Hello and welcome to High Sugar. Today's podcast looks at superfoods for diabetics. Enjoy. Blueberries.
cranberries. Apples Watermelon, Honeydew and Rockmelon Raspberries Red Grapefruit Tomatoes Asparagus Carrots Broccoli Red Onion Spinach Fish Soy Yogurt Flaxseed Nuts
campaigns. Oatmeal. Recently, we have had a number of viewers ask us about diabetes mellitus and the accompanying complication of diabetic peripheral neuropathy, a very painful condition, which affects the nerves in your body, generally the longest nerves that reach your feet. We decided to do this very short video on diabetes mellitus. Type 2 diabetes, or high blood sugar, is fast becoming one of the most horrible illnesses in America, and it's largely preventable. If you have type 2 diabetes mellitus, chances are extremely good that your doctor is going to recommend weight loss. The condition of diabetes mellitus is caused by your pancreas creating insulin but your body having an inability to actually absorb that insulin. The more fat you have on your body, the higher your insulin resistance. This often results in some very serious extenuated problems. If you have DPN, or diabetic peripheral neuropathy, caused by type 2 diabetes, this information might improve your condition quite dramatically. This is not a substitute for your medication, nor is it meant to supersede the advice of your own physician or neurologist. It is an adjunct treatment that we've had positive results with in limited patient trials. But the results have been absolutely outstanding. DPN, or diabetic peripheral neuropathy, is a condition that often goes unnoticed until symptoms become quite uncomfortable or even painful. What could be mistaken for a foot falling asleep might actually be an early onset or warning sign of diabetes. Diabetes, put simply, is high blood sugar, and high blood sugar has some very serious systemic effects. We are limiting the focus of this video to just the condition of neuropathy caused by diabetes type 2. High blood sugar has a very pronounced effect on your nerves. It actually strips the myelin off of your nerves, causing false or even amplified sensations of pain, hot or cold. Some patients refer to it as burning in their toes or a pins and needles feeling or numbness and buzzing. The myelin, or insulation, is like the rubber around an electrical cord, shielding the internal wire, the nerve conduit. There are differing opinions on whether the myelin shielding can actually regenerate. While the determination on regeneration is still out with the jury, these guidelines have been shown to reverse DPN in our test subjects. Your doctor can provide the best treatment, but these health modifications are a very potent remedy for treating and reversing very painful DPN. Since everybody's body is entirely different, the very first place you start is with your own doctor. He or she can provide the very best treatment and management of your personal condition. These very simple steps can provide a very effective reduction of painful DPN. 
The first thing that you need to do is get your blood glucose level under control. And in order to do this effectively, you'll need to make some dietary changes, as well as some changes in your habits of exercise and bodily maintenance. Nearly all patients who have diabetes type 2 are overweight, which causes problems. So diet and exercise are absolutely crucial. Exercise is a primary way of reversing your condition and the DPN. Visit your doctor to evaluate your health before beginning. Here are some general guidelines that can get you on your way. The importance of exercise cannot be overstated, nor can the benefits of eating well. A healthful diet is great for your body, obviously, but in terms of the treatment of disease, it's one of the most crucial steps. Not only is eating the right foods enormously important, but also the intervals at which you do eat. Rather than eating two or three rather large meals a day, you should be eating often, small meals, well-balanced meals, meals that are approximately the same amount of calories at each serving. The best way to treat high blood sugar is to never allow it to occur, meaning that low glycemic meals are the way to go. Low glycemic meals are just naturally good meals, period. A well-balanced meal for someone who's fit is the same as a well-balanced meal for a diabetic. As you begin your dietary and exercise changes, you'll notice some vast improvements. Some of these may not be what you expect. Your condition of DPN may actually feel like it's worsening briefly as the nerves repair themselves. But if your body is given the nutrition it needs, and the exercise maintenance of your body is maintained, you'll actually notice some enormous changes to your body, your condition, as well as the painful complication of diabetic peripheral neuropathy. We will include some links to diabetic organizations so that you'll have some resources at your disposal. Again, you'll be shooting to eat several small meals a day and several well-balanced snacks. Eating well and throughout the day will reduce your desire to eat more, and eating more will only increase your blood sugar levels. Eating high glycemic foods can sharply increase your blood sugar level immediately, even radically, and dangerously. So visit your doctor, create yourself an exercise program and a dietary schedule that you stick to. It's best to also eat meals at the same time each day. That way your body will actually adjust to the new changes and your blood sugar will never spike. Since the insulin in your body is used to digest carbohydrates, you'll be looking to reduce all the refined carbohydrates, looking only for complex carbohydrates like whole grains. There are also some very simple snack foods that you can bring around with you that actually promote good nerve health. Pistachios are very high in B vitamins that help keep your nerves in good working order and prevent damage. Peanuts are also good. They're also rather affordable. And having to shell them creates a little bit for you to do. It's not really valuable in terms of the exercise, but it keeps you doing something and keeps your focus on your new diet. You'll also want to reduce or eliminate alcohol use. In addition, if you do smoke cigarettes, Quit at once. Smoking constricts blood vessels and causes an enormous amount of other problems that you don't need. If you believe you might have diabetes mellitus, talk to your doctor first. Do not try self-cures when you're unable to diagnose yourself. To recap, step one, visit your doctor for a diagnosis and care and treatment options. Step 2. Exercise within your doctor's recommendation. 
3. Change your dietary habits. Your doctor can provide some ways for you to adjust gradually and get your blood sugar under control. And 4. Do not procrastinate. Once severe damage has occurred to your nerves, it may be irreversible. The faster you start, the faster you'll see results. Do not be discouraged. Follow through completely. Hey, my name is Marcus Grip, and in this video, I'm going to show you the top 10 foods that does not affect your blood sugar. These are both healthy, beneficial, and of course perfect for people with both types of diabetes. Before we get started, I just wanted to share a quick little tip for you who are just starting out with eating healthier and different, and that have a hard time getting rid of all the carbohydrates, because I know it's pretty hard. So a great thing with protein and fat is that it slows down the conversion from food to blood sugar. Which means, if you're still eating carbohydrates, even though I recommend trying to get rid of as much as possible, you can add fat and protein to your meal to slow down the absorption of carbohydrates, which means you will not get a strong peak in the blood sugar as you would have with the carbohydrates alone. Now, that said, it still will affect your blood sugar, of course, but just for you who hasn't started out or have 100% commitment, it's a step in the right direction. Now. Let's look at those top 10 foods that does not affect the blood sugar. Bear in mind that this list has no specific order and the first or last one doesn't mean that they're best or healthiest or worst or bad or something like that. It's just the way I, I, I made it. Okay, so number one, onion and garlic. Onion and garlic is very healthy and beneficial and is actually the food that has less pesticides and chemicals on them of the conventional food if you feel that organic food is too expensive which makes it cheaper and easier to buy since it's not that big difference between the organic ones and the conventional ones. And I think that's because of the shell that they have, so they don't feel that they have to, because that shell is a natural protection, so that's, that's the reason why that is. So garlic is really awesome for tons of stuff. It helps, for example, with high cholesterol, poor digestion, diabetes and blood sugar, of course that's important for us, yeast infections, boost immune system, Increase absorption of iron and zinc, antioxidants, cold and flu, it's antifungal, parasites, allergies, and so on. It's like, uh, you know, it's a miracle thing. Back in the old days, you know, I I'm talking like hundreds and thousands of years back, this was used a lot by doctors since, you know, already then because they knew how great garlic was. Onions are very good source of vitamin C, B6, biotin, chromium, calcium, and dietary fiber. In addition, they contain good amounts of folic acid and vitamin B1 and K. So it's also a great help uh, for the liver. So you know, both onion and garlic are amazing and they really help and I eat that almost every day because I know how great it is. Okay, so number two, let's keep on going. Leafy greens. You know, this is the most important part of my meals. Leafy greens are so healthy, full of micronutrients like vitamins and minerals. Uh, they are very beneficial for the body in so many ways and they are alkaline which supports a tremendous amount of health especially in this world where most all normal food is so acid for our bodies so this is just pure superfood with no effects on the blood sugar that's that's that I use it in smoothies salads on side dishes to anything else you know I make burritos with the leafy greens it's just awesome for everything okay so number three fatty seeds Healthy seeds full of healthy fats like flax seeds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, chia seeds and alfalfa seeds are super healthy and are very high in fat and protein and have either no carbs or very low amount of carbs and almost exclusively all of those carbs are dietary fiber and according to my experience with seeds and also according to nutritiondata.self.com which is uh, a huge database with food and their nutrition and information and stuff these seeds have no glycemic load, which is a number that they use to measure how much it affects the blood sugar. So, basically it doesn't affect the blood sugar at all, uh, but it's super healthy. So next time you put cereal in your yogurt, replace that with some great seeds or just eat them as they are as snacks. So, number four, avocados. This is truly my candy throughout the day. It's delicious, can be used in many, many ways, and easy to prepare and eat have as a snack or you know whatever you want 
Uh, avocado is full of healthy vitamins and minerals as well, and also have a great amount of healthy fatty acids, omega-3 and 6, which is very important. It's also full of vitamin A, C, E, K, B6, folate, and it's also anti-inflammatory. So that's great. Okay, so number five, coconut. If you eat the raw meat, coca flakes, or the coconut oil, you will not have to worry about your blood sugar since coconut has a high amount of fat and almost uh, all the carbs are dietary fiber and has basically no glycemic load at all. So I always use coconut oil if I cook something, which is very rarely because I'm a high raw food eater. <laughs> and I also use just eat it as it is, uh, like the actually the coconut oil and the coconut fat, I actually eat it, eat it as it is. Uh, but I also use it, you know, you can use it for baking raw desserts of some sort and stuff like that. So it has several uses and it's very healthy for you. So it's awesome. Uh, just make sure it's organic with all the stuff here. I'm going to mention that <laughs> many, many times in my videos, but that's very important. I think that's uh, a big uh, health changer for you. So, okay. Number six is nuts. Nuts like walnuts, hazelnuts, peanuts, or almonds are super high in healthy fats and proteins as well. They have barely any carb, which again is just dietary fiber, and is very anti-inflammatory. Anti-inflammatory, sorry. Short said, nuts are very healthy. Great snacks that doesn't mess with your blood sugar. You know, you can have them in yogurt as well. But just be a little more careful with the cashew, as they tend to have more carbs. But again, it's nothing like a glass of juice or a Snickers bar or something like that. But I've seen a little raise sometimes in my blood sugar with cashew. Uh, but it also depends how much you eat, you know, what I, I really go nuts, <laughs> literally speaking, and eat like 100 or 200 grams of it because it's delicious and I eat it as a snack or, uh, you know, yeah, between meals. Uh, so it makes sense uh, since the glycemic load is 11 per 100 gram and over if the glycemic load number is over 15, it is classified as, you know, affecting your blood sugar. So it's close to that kind of limit, but the other ones are, are no problem. But just to make sure, like cashew are a little more, but still way more healthy and way less sweet uh, and have less effect on your blood sugar than a uh, glass of juice or Snickers bars or candies like that. Okay, so number seven is herbs, like basil, cilantro, uh, oregano, mint, lemon balm, and so on, you know, all kinds of herbs. Uh, are very good because they have basically no macronutrients which is you know the proteins the fats and the carbs but instead have a lot of vitamins and minerals so they have no effect on the blood sugar but gives great taste to the food of course because that's how we usually use them and they have healthy vitamins and minerals and a lot of cleansing and healing properties so make sure they are organic and fresh or do as I do you know plant your own that's awesome because not only is it fun, I, I love to have my own plants and take care of them like my own little babies, but it also saves you money. So, you know, if, if you want to save money, plant your own stuff. And you just buy some organic seed, plant it, and then you can see the whole process. You can be part of it. And you, Like I have my awesome basil plant. I take some leaves and then I let it grow more, take some more leaves, and, you know, it's great. So make sure you use a lot of herbs in your food, fresh, organic herbs to spice it up with because it's going to give you a lot of... Uh, a lot of bonus um, health properties. So, number eight, eggs. A great source of the very essential vitamin B12 and a good amount of protein and fat comes from eggs. No effect on the blood sugar and a great way to start the day and they're easy to cook and cheap as well. Uh, so, you know, what's not to love? Just be careful not to eat too much since eggs are a dairy product which makes our body acids so compensate with an avocado and some salad to it and that's basically what I have for breakfast and I love it. So here's number 9. Again, this is top 10 foods that doesn't affect the blood sugar and even though you might know I promote a very high alkaline diet, for some people or in some times you have to use some dairy products and that's okay as long as it's not more than the alkaline food and not too often if you want to go for a really serious health with the alkaline diet style. So here goes number nine which is butter and cheese. And I'm talking real real butter without any additives, not margarine. So real real butter that is high in fat and it's just you know pure butter. 
Cheese is a little harder to mess around with, but even though the animals that the cheese is made from can have been treated badly and been fed growth hormones, which of course affects the outcome of the cheese products, so make sure it's organic here as well. The growth hormones is going to affect the, the animal and that's going to affect the cheese where it comes from. So, so make sure everything is organic and that's going to benefit you a lot, in, especially in the long term. So, the last but not least, number 10 is oils. Okay, oils are 100% fat and you got to be very delicate and careful with what you choose. I only use organic coconut oil, organic cold pressed extra virgin olive oil or organic hemp oil. I always make sure that it's organic, high quality and nothing bogus in it because using normal conventional like sunflower oil or palm oil and all those other and even olive oil you know is the conventional ones. Uh, all, all of those weird, you know, when they even mixed oils are just pure crap and bottles of chemical shitstorm, <laughs> frankly speaking. So, uh, but the good ones are fantastic to have on your food to spice up the flavor. Or if you have to cook and you're not like high raw food like me, it's great for cooking. And of course, my favorite, make your own pesto. Is You know, you need olive oil for pesto. So I usually make my own, which is delicious. So I use my organic olive oil to make it. And it's awesome. And I can have it for everything. It makes my salad taste like heaven. So, okay, now. You've been going through the top 10 foods that doesn't affect your blood sugar and you also saw what health benefits and properties they have. It's like a little bonus. So a quick recap. Number one, onions and garlic. Great body cleansers in so many ways. Okay, number two, leafy greens. These are just made for everything and is truly superfood. Number three, seeds. Can be used in several ways, full of great fats and vitamins and minerals. Number four is avocado and that's my personal favorite. That is perfect snack or side dish to any meal. And then you have number five, which is coconut, full of fat, delicious flavor, and comes in many ways and forms like oils, fat, flakes, flour, and so on. Number six is nuts. Great snack and replacement for candy, and great to have instead of cereal or granola in your yogurt or milk. And actually, nuts can also come in flour, so you can use it for baking and stuff like that. Number seven is herbs. Most full of micronutrients instead of protein, fats, and carbs, and of course spice up the food and make it more alive, and has ways to benefit the body and your overall health. Okay, so number eight is eggs. It's perfect for breakfast, a lot of uses in baking and cooking, and a great source of the essential vitamin B12. Number nine is butter and cheese, and it's acid for the body, so keep it in moderation, but as you know, has many uses in our lives, and cheese is delicious to freaking everything in my opinion. So, full of fat, no problems for the blood sugar. That's it. And number 10, which is oils that we also have great use for in our kitchen in many ways. And as I always recommend, keep everything you buy as local, as clean, for, from chemicals and as organic as possible, and even consider growing your own in your garden. It's really not that hard, and I will make a video about that in the future, but until then, Google can offer you pretty uh, significant amount of help so google around and see what you can find but I'm, uh, I'm gonna make a video about that too so if you're a subscriber you're gonna know about it so I hope this video gave you a lot of value and help and if I did please like the video uh, on the button below so thank you for watching my name is Marcus Grip and talk to you soon Hi, this is Dr. Newhouse. I want to talk to you today about a neuroma. Neuroma is a common problem that we see in the office. Uh, people will come into the office with complaints of numbness in their toes, uh, sharp stabbing pains in the ball of their foot. Some people will say that it feels like, it feels like they're walking on a rock or have a pebble in their shoe. Um, some people will describe this pain as uh, a sock that's balled up um, between their toes. When they take their shoe off and look, there's nothing there. There's no rock in their shoe. There's no sock abnormality. Um, a neuroma is actually a nerve problem. It's a irregularity with the nerve, typically swelling of the nerve or swelling of the tissue around the nerve, putting abnormal pressure on it. Typically it's worse when you're up on the balls of your feet. If you're on your feet, um, period, just on hard, 
hard surfaces, um, you're going to feel this problem. It can be a, a numbness, um, a tingling, stabbing. It can be a very, um, very bothersome problem. It's typically very, very easy to treat. Well, I shouldn't say very easy. It's n nothing is ever easy to treat, but it's pre pretty straightforward fairly easy to identify an aroma. Um, if you pinch in between your toes, that's the classic, uh, classic test that we use in the office. Pinching in between your toes, and if you can feel that exquisite pain there, um, you probably have a neuroma. You want to make sure that you don't have pain on the joint. Um, when you move your toes up and down at the, the ball of the foot in the joint, um, you can have what's called a capsulitis, which is swelling of the joint, which can be um, misinterpreted or misdiagnosed as a neuroma. Um, a neuroma typically is treated conservatively with changing your shoes, anti-inflammatory medication, sometimes we'll use inserts in the shoes, padding to take pressure off of certain areas of the foot. Um, the most common area for a neuroma is between the third and fourth toes. Classically, that's called a Morton's neuroma. Um, you can also get them between the second and third toes, um, and it's less common to get them between the fourth and fifth or the first and second, but they can occur in that area. Typically, you do not see this in both feet. It's just one foot at a time, though we certainly do see it um, on, on both feet, um, but it's just not common. As far as treatment options, um, in addition to the other things that I described, I'll frequently do a cortisone injection to calm down the swelling around the area. That's something that can be very helpful. Obviously, you need to come into the office to, uh, to get an injection. That's not something you can try at home. Um, but some of the other things you can. So I'd recommend you try that. Try changing your shoes, changing your activities, taking some ibuprofen, anti-inflammatory type medicine like that if you're able to. Um, and uh, try some of the pads that are over the counter. We have certainly some other pads that we recommend in the office. But a Morton's neuroma is, is something that we do see. And uh, one of those things that if you know what you're looking for, it's very easy to identify. Sometimes it can be stubborn. And uh, in certain cir circumstances, they will need surgery to remove the nerve or uh, do some other types of injections. I'll do an alcohol injection to deaden the nerve. There's also radiofrequency ablation where you kill the nerve using heat. There are some different treatment options, but I hope that helps answer your questions about neuromas and gives you some useful information. Uh, thanks for using the website.